Hi, I'm Brian the Bushman. Just finished coming back from a, a sawmill, uh, cleaning up a lot of their scrap wood. Went to get uh, a load of wood for my cameraman here. <laughs> He's been helping me out a lot, uh, taking the videos, putting them on YouTube. I want to show you today my uh, advancements to the scrap iron lathe. So we'll just uh, swing around here and I'll get ready while he shows you the view there. Okay, now this is uh, where I set my scrap iron lay that's on the other side of the house. The view is a little bit more, but you know, we do get a bit of rain here in, near in the north coast and I needed a little shelter. So I put together this little uh, shelter from uh, scrap, uh, scrap parts from the dump. And uh, then I put some salvage greenhouse plastic on it. And when I want to lathe and look at the beautiful view, all the things that God's created, it's very simple. I just wind it up. And if I want, I can just uh, grab the ends here, if I have a little bit of help, and just uh, move the thing totally away. But that gives me a nice view there. Or I could just push it right over the top, but uh, it's a little hard to get back on. So anyway, I've got it all covered up here, what I want to show you today. So we're going to just take a second here and do an okay. unveiling. When I... At the end of the first video that I made, I put a log on there and uh, turned it down. And now I wanted to uh, finish that project, but uh, I needed a way to hold that piece. So I made this uh, steady rest. I was going to make one out of steel and probably still will, but I needed something fast and I didn't have the scrap steel and certainly wouldn't want to buy steel to make something like that. So I uh, made this out of wood. What it is is two pieces of approximately three quarter inch plywood uh, that was scrounged up from a roof and bolted uh, one piece on each side of a piece of heavy angle iron and then a piece of quarter inch in the, in the middle. It looks so good that I decided to paint it and snazz it up a little bit. Another thing I'd like you to note on this is my arms. I use this clamp here and it's easy just to loosen that and move them back or wherever you want them. The sides of this arm and the sides of the guides are tapered so with very little pressure it locks it in extremely tight it's something like the taper on a tailstock or something like that these of course were just skateboard wheels that somebody didn't want they replaced them with better ones but uh, and they seem to work just fine just very good there I don't have hollowing tools as of yet to hollow something out so I made a little tool rest that would slide right into the thing there. And that was just made with a piece of half inch round uh, thereabouts, piece of scrap that I had and a little a pin here. This was a pin, cut it off, put it in. And uh, I was actually was able to hollow the silly thing out with uh, doing that. I had two tools that I used basically. I had this one which was a carbide tool and by using that support I could get all the way in with that and uh, then I made uh, took a piece of well this was already manufactured it was uh, from my metal lathe the boring bar and a lathe bit and then to make it longer I found this piece of pipe and it just fit in here and I had to tap it on there and I had a wicked looking tool there. But uh, it's not the best way to do hollowing, so I will be making some sort of a hollowing tool. 
In order to start the center, I had to make an extension for my Forrester bits. Just a piece of uh, metal rod. For some reason I would found it somewhere. It had threads on both ends, cut the threads on, made a little collar so I could use, a, use an Allen set screw to tighten it up. What I did, because I didn't think I could cut this size out, I started with this one, went in about a half an inch, then that gave a nice center, then I drilled it out with a smaller one, and since I had the, it started with this, it was a guide on the outside, and I could continue it on to the bottom there. And that goes in about that far. Went in, a, I drilled it in near the bottom, about that far. Okay, uh, so I think that's about it. I was going to have a demonstration uh, actually doing the project, but yesterday after I made the, the tool rest and wanted to see how it all worked, I got so excited I just went ahead and, and did it. So anyway, I'll turn it on so you can at least see it go. Oh. Another mention about this uh, steady rest is I chose a square design. That way you had lots of uh, distance for the guide. If you had a ring, the most of that I've seen have been quite short for the guides. And I thought this would utilize the, the support to the maximum. Another thing I did on my lathe here I was working here yesterday and uh, I didn't have anywhere to put my parts and tools and stuff like that. I was stuffing stuff in my pockets and <laughs> laying it here and laying it there. And I thought, oh, I had a, a dry box that somebody didn't want. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just set it on a couple oil buckets here. And I got a place now when I'm here, I can reach over, grab a tool. And then when I'm done, I can lift the lid, put everything inside, no rain on your stuff. So anyway, that's my demonstration for today. I hope you like my, my uh, steady rest here and uh, maybe we'll make something else and put it on here. Plan to make a real fancy uh, hollowing tool system. Maybe some of you got some suggestions for me. So till next time, alios. Oh, I forgot to close up my building. I guess I better do that while we go unload the wood. It's quite easy, actually. That's all there is to it. See you next time. <laughs>